USA in our uh, US conferences. Now we have a speaker from uh, who works from the uh, uh, US Department of Veteran Affairs, David Mazik. Hello, David. How are you? Good. How are you? We are doing really well. Glad to have you uh, on stage here in uh, virtual Europe, right? Virtual Paris. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's have a 20 minute discussion together plus five minute question about your topic healthcare innovation with APIs in government. Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, Mehdi. And, and thanks to API Days for giving us the opportunity to speak with everyone today. And thanks for your time. Uh, and, and most importantly, thanks to the, the entire team uh, back at VA. Uh, without whose hard work and commitment, uh, I wouldn't have the opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, so just before I get started, I just wanted to give a quick interview of, of VA. It's a big place. It has a, a great mission and uh, a lot of services and benefits we provide to our veterans. I just wanted to walk through that real quick. Um, throughout VA, um, we are all working towards a common mission, which really aligns us uh, with North Star, make sure um, we're all trying to achieve effectively the same outcomes, that is servicing our veterans and those families. So what you see on the right there is what you would see walking into to VA central office in Washington, DC, and it sort of reminds us all on a daily basis, um, even at the API layer, believe it or not, um, why we're doing the, the things that we do. Um, so just to give a, a very broad stroke uh, of just all the things VA does, um, in general, we serve roughly 19.2 million veterans. Um, across a wide diverse set of benefits and services. So for example, we have 1 million students receiving education assistance, tuition assistance uh, and housing assistance, 2.6 million active home loans. Uh, so veterans are able to qualify for uh, mortgages uh, with reduced rates. Um, we have 4.6 million veterans receiving disability compensation. Uh, VA operates 151 national cemeteries across the country. And then most importantly, what we'll be talking about today is we have over 9 million healthcare enrollees. Um, so that's the largest integrated healthcare provider uh, in, the, in the US. Um, so that's really, you know, when we talk about what we're doing in APIs, this is where we're, we'll be focusing our efforts today. Our API portal and our program at VA supports all, all administrations within VA. So it touches benefits, uh, health and other, other areas, but we'll be focusing on the, the health piece today. So diving in a little deeper to the health administration at VA. Um, so this is by far the largest within VA. It has nearly 350,000 employees, 30% of which are veterans. So if you were to just look at that in the context of US employers, we would be roughly the 11th largest employer. Um, over its history, it's had three Nobel Prize winners. Nearly two thirds of all US medical residents uh, in the entire country obtain at least a portion of their training at VA hospitals. Uh, 1,255 healthcare facilities, 107 of those are, are large VA medical centers, and then uh, 1074 outpatient sites. And then again, we mentioned the roughly 9 million uh, enrollees receiving uh, a, a wealth of, of services in those facilities. So long before APIs, uh, VA has a, a long history uh, of innovation. Uh, and this certainly is not an all-inclusive or the most recent uh, list of, of things we've been doing, but just to give you a, sort of some color as to what we've done in the past. Um, first clinically uh, successful implantable pacemaker, uh, first liver transplant, the first US EHR system. Uh, I know you may have heard there's a large uh, EHR modernization effort going on in VA today. Uh, developed the first nicotine patch, first powered ankle foot uh, prosthetic, and then more recently, uh, Cancer Moonshot with IBM Watson, uh, helping select what treatment courses might be best suited for patients based on health history and, and health conditions. So just to sort of, before I dive into the details of what VA does with APIs in the health space, just wanted a sort of a refresher. Uh, and I think this is all, given the great presentations I've been seeing thus far in the past day and a half, I, I think this is well understood by lots of people, but just to walk through it, I think, what we want to make sure doesn't happen is that we don't end up when we try to innovate looking like the, the gentleman on the right and end up having a bad hair day. Um, we really want to build APIs and make them accessible so that people can fail fast. Uh, and there's very little friction and very little cost in doing so, right? Because when you're talking about innovation, it's very difficult to exactly know what your problem space is. I think most of us know in the startup space, most of the successful businesses uh, 
end up solving problems that wasn't anything related to their core mission to start. All right, so we've heard this over and over uh, um, how products came out and businesses came out of a completely different context of where their starting point was. So what does that mean for APIs um, to fail fast and cheaply? Uh, discovery, right? Obviously, you have to enable discovery so that it's really easy to find out what's there. You don't have to have meetings. You don't have to go digging around in long protected documentation sites. So you need to know the, the realm of possibility that you're dealing with. Then once you find it, you need to be able to understand it. So you need great documentation. You need to be able to try it without writing any code. Um, and then another thing that's really important, especially within, within BA and our third party partners, is you need to tell a story. So not just do you need to have good documentation for the developers, but you need to have some kind of documentation and story that has the stakeholders who are looking at your content and your APIs engaged in delivers the message of what value may be enabled on their side through the APIs you deliver. So after you have all that, you've had application developers discover what's there, they understand it, they know how to write code against it, but they haven't actually started, you've got stakeholder buy-in. Now you need to make the process of building an application against those APIs really easy. Uh, so right, one thing you need is you need 100% self-service sandbox environments. In, in other words, you need environments where people can develop applications against a self-service environment completely on their own without any inner involvement from anyone on the API team. Of course, that support needs to be there for questions uh, and problems, but ideally that support wouldn't need to be engaged much or at all uh, to build an application from start to finish in that sandbox environment. Uh, code snippets and sample apps, right? So I think we've seen in many presentations, right? Being able to generate curl commands without writing any code and sample apps to cut and paste code into your applications. Another key piece of that is are good SLAs. Um, not just in a production environment, right? Obviously that's key to end user experience, but you need good SLAs in that sandbox in that dev environment so that when engineers are getting paid to write code and do build their applications, you're your, your APIs are functional and performant uh, while that work is going on. And then uh, another big important thing in the innovation space is when you publish a set of APIs, you have, I think, an initial idea of how those might be consumed. What, you, what you'll see when people are building innovative apps is that they combine these things and use these things in very different ways than you might have anticipated in the past. And we've definitely seen this in the VA as well where maybe we build a health API, but now there's two other APIs and other domains that are being pulled into applications with that health API uh, to build meaningful experiences for end users in ways we certainly didn't envision. And if you're gonna do that as an application developer, you need to make sure all the APIs look the same, they're coherent, they have similar response codes, they have similar error codes. Um, the, the encoding of different fields is done in the same manner. Uh, because while you may have many different teams building different APIs, the application developer really doesn't care, right? They want to be able to code to these APIs in all the same way. And then something very unique in the, in the health space is you want to make sure that uh, you have meaningful synthetic data, so mock data, right? So that remember the sandbox environment has to be self-service, so you certainly don't want any real personal health information in that environment, but you do need a representative population set so that you can build a meaningful application. Um, you First, you wanna make sure that all the functionality that may be uncovered in production is represented in Sandbox so that you minimize your surprises and your hiccups in that migration from, from to production. But then secondly, you actually wanna have your application come to the same outcomes and the same conclusions and working with that data are very similar as much as you can to what they might see in production. So another, another key uh, desirable trait you want in, in enabling easy applications to be built. So I'm gonna dive into now what we've done uh, at VA specifically uh, with health APIs. So I think there was a, a presentation yesterday from Google where you know the, 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 the metaphor of algae in a pond was used uh, to build an ecosystem, right? You, you put the algae in the pond and then you get more fish and then you get more, more fauna uh, around that, that entire ecosystem. And that's exactly, I think, a great analogy, right? We're making data available um, through standards-based APIs in, this, in the health space. I think many people are familiar with fire or fast healthcare interoperability resources. Um, but we want that data and those APIs to enable an ecosystem of all the different organizations and 
user personas we work with, whether they be technology innovators, explicit partners of VA, other government agencies, uh, other providers, other healthcare organizations, but more specifically and most importantly, our, our veterans and our patients. Uh, so it's really our, our intention. So here's uh, a little bit of more detail about what we built at VA and our VA Lighthouse API portal. So on the left is what you see, if you actually go to that today, and I'll share some links at the end. But when you get that, that registration on Sandbox, you immediately get access in a completely automated fashion to a whole host of things that enable you to build your application, the core API resources, the servers supporting those API and resources. You get API schema, so you can exactly know how the requests and responses are to be formed correctly. Um, with Fire, something that's very important is an implementation guide. So the Fire is very good at specifying just what the menu is effectively, but the implementation guides go one step further to say just how much of the menu you're actually serving in your restaurant today. So very important piece in the, in the health domain. And as we discussed before, not only do you get access to all these things, but more, most importantly, you get synthetic patient health data so that you can develop functionality and also have a good understanding of just what outcomes you might see on that population or the, those cohorts uh, within the synthetic data that you might see in a production environment. Okay, so the first MVP in the health space we launched in the in the API space at VA was our, our Veteran Health Records API. Um, so we are both privileged and responsible uh, for maintaining all our veterans' patient health history, um, but it's not VA data. At the end of the day, it's the, the data of our veterans and our patients. Um, so we want to really put them in control of that data and their health history and make it accessible to them in the easiest way possible while still ensuring that it's treated in the in the most secure way possible. So we launched a, a health API to do just that in November of 2019. Um, since then, more recently, we're actually moving to the new version of the FIRE standard, and we'll talk about uh, what the larger context is in terms of that effort. And we have five applications in production today. These are five applications in the health space specifically uh, developed by third parties, not VA that um, enable native iPhone uh, and Android functionality as well as web apps that obviously can be run on those mobile devices or uh, desktops as well. And what's really key here is um, not just is this making veterans health data available to them and putting them in control, which is very important, but that's not the first time VA's done that, um, right? We have a very successful patient portal where our veterans are very actively engaged. But what it has enabled is those applications to expand the capabilities beyond what VA can do directly, at least easily. Um, so on many of these health applications, they're aggregating health history across many different private healthcare providers. So many of our veterans have third-party assurance in addition to that, the healthcare services and, and capabilities provided by VA to them. A lot of our health, uh, all of our veterans obviously have DOD health history, uh, Department of Defense, and then some have uh, health history to services like Medicare and Medicaid as well. So these applications, for example, can now connect to not just VA, but all these organizations and providers and provide a, a coherent longitudinal deduplicated complete health record for the veteran, right? So you can imagine if we had to take this on natively as VA, we would have to do all that work, but we were able to leverage private industry and, and partners and reduce what VA had to provide in simply making that day, that veteran patient data easily accessible and letting the innovation happen, you know, with third party applications and organizations and partners of ours to deliver more value ultimately to our veterans than those end users. Okay, another uh, thing we've done recently. So Mission Act is a, is a high priority uh, effort within VA. It was a law that was passed in 2018 it's built upon an earlier one, an earlier effort called Veterans Choice from 2014. So VA, as you can imagine, has a, a very diverse population spread throughout the country. Um, obviously, significant patient population size. What we want to make sure is that we always deliver quality and timely care to veterans. So as part of both of these efforts, VA opened up the ability to send veterans out to private providers if it, deter, it was determined that we might not be able to do so in a, on a quick and quality time scale from VA itself. So there's many veterans that live in very rural areas, for example, and they may have a provider 
that's 10 minutes from their home, whereas the nearest VA facility providing the same service may be three hours away. Um, so we want to make sure that we enable veterans to receive that timely care that's accessible uh, to them. So um, what we want to do when we do this is there's a criteria that was in place for, for Veterans Choice and the criteria was expanded for Mission Act as to just when and where we might send those veterans out to the community. And in general, we're looking at the best medical interest of, of the veteran of the patient. But when we do this, we want to make sure, irrespective of how the veterans are interacting with the VA, we want to provide that same answer to the same question. In other words, a, a common source of truth. So on the left here of our APR portal, you see a couple applications. So one is a clinical facing application we call decision support tool. And the other is a, a veteran facing tool we call VA online scheduling. Both of those tools are ultimately used to schedule appointments for veterans. Um, and as part of the scheduling process, you could imagine we need to make that decision using Mission Act criteria. Do we send them to a VA facility or is it in their best interest to send them out to a private provider in the community? So we wanna provide that common source of truth irrespective of whether a veteran is acting in a self-service fashion through VA online scheduling or they're working with a clinician or a provider using that decision support tool. So obviously APIs are a great way to solve that sort that common source of truth problem and making sure we give the veteran the same answer every time uh, irrespective of how they interact with VA. Uh, another application that built against our APIs uh, is something called the clinical trial selector. So this is an application that takes the veteran's health history into account and combines that with its database and knowledge of cancer clinical trials that are ongoing or upcoming. Uh, and what it does in this is it enables the veterans to become more aware of clinical trials that may be best suited to them based on their current health conditions and their health history obtained through our health APIs. So this is, I, I think, a great a great area where we, we're delivering more value to veterans, especially those in a, in a critical time of need, um, and making them more aware and more in control of their, their care uh, than they may otherwise have been able to do. So uh, this is a really exciting uh, application. Um, just looking ahead, um, so we talked about some of the things we have done, um, looking to what we might want to do in the future, what we have planned in our roadmap as well. So obviously the, the Office of National Coordinator out of um, HHS has put out a Cures Act, which is meant to align the healthcare industry uh, from an API perspective and a policy perspective within the United States. Um, a lot of the industry is moving forward to this. So this is all really about making sure we reduce that friction to application developers. And if we move forward with that, we will just immediately enable application developers to communicate with us as that, that standard and that set of policy evolves forward. So uh, the R4 version of the FIRE, we talked about that, FIRE standard, we talked about that before. And then a, a, a US core implementation guide, which builds upon the earlier implementation guides we implemented to ensure that the core resources, the core health resources beyond that, that FIRE API standard are there to serve up correctly and, and in a useful way. Um, another thing, I think if we, we took a poll for the, the audience here as to how many people are actually wearing devices that generate personal health care, personal health data, uh, whether it be, you know, smart watches or exercise devices, um, I think there's the adoption here has just been immense and the data that could be mined and put to useful purposes here is just immense. So we're doing a, taking a deep look at how we can enable improved air and improved care and outcomes for patients individually. Uh, for those that uh, just general wellness is maybe there's, uh, you know, improved ability to get insight into conditions that may be presenting themselves and providers or patients aren't aware of them yet. Uh, or also to encourage positive health outcomes. Um, or maybe there's chronic conditions where, you know, for example, a glucometer in a, in a diabetes care uh, environment it may be more useful to get you know, readings over time rather than just having per a periodic office visit to evaluate the readings that occurred uh, over the past month, for example. Um, and likewise, uh, beyond individual patients and care, um, looking at cohorts. Um, so right, one of the most important things to VA is suicide prevention. Um, so there's a lot of research that's ongoing in terms of sleep data, for example, on how that might affect mental health outcomes and then ultimately suicide. Um, so there's large cohort analysis you could do looking across an entire patient population to maybe focus on the patients who are becoming more at risk of, of 
having mental health issues or on the cusp of having mental health issues. And then obviously research uh, beyond that, right? Maybe de-identifying these data that comes in from these devices so that you could do research for determining better ways uh, of affecting outcomes uh, and care in the future across your entire patient population. Um, another area we're looking at improving is we have, uh, as we mentioned with, with Mission Act and Veterans Choice, so community care is what we refer, refer to as the partners of VA that provide this healthcare services to our veterans if we send them out of VA to because of all those good reasons we, we discussed before. With a patient population of over 9 million patients, you can imagine that this is a very complex process, right? There's claims to be shared, there's billing information to be shared, payments, uh, health history, making sure providers on both sides of that wall within VA and in the community have the same view of the patient health history and the current health conditions. So there's a lot of data and API work that we can do here to improve that journey for the veteran across that entire process. So we're really excited to participate in that as well. And then lastly, um, developing clinical support apps, right? So this is something that's really come up in the context of COVID. There may be the need to really stand up, to stand up clinical facing applications really quickly uh, in, in the context of COVID, for example, you know, putting together a COVID decision criteria and treatment outcome, treatment uh, flows and processes. Um, so APIs obviously are a, a key way of, again, reducing that friction and enabling quick application development. Uh, in that process. So we're, we're looking at doing more API development there to support the internal clinical facing apps, as well as those that might be used in, by, by private industry in our community partners. Uh, lastly, uh, if you wanna learn more, um, so developer.va.gov is our portal. You feel free to go there and explore. All our API documentation is there. Within that, um, the news site there that we have, there's a bunch of articles and, and blog posts about some things we've done in the past. The health link obviously is the documentation link to all of our health APIs in relation to today's discussion. And then lastly, the, the last two links I have there. So what we also do on VA.gov for our veterans is we bring awareness to one, uh, the applications that are available to them through via APIs in, in third from third party organizations. But also once they've granted consent uh, to those applications to connect to their data from VA, we also give them the ability to see essentially which of those applications they've done so uh, for in the past and also revoke. Uh, of course, they can do this when the application themselves, but uh, this gives them essentially another way of controlling to, you know, becoming aware of controlling just that connection between these third party applications and VA. And, and then lastly, we have a uh, an email list. Uh, that's usually our support portal, but if you have any questions about any of our APIs or portal, uh, you know, we have a, a staff, a, a support folks that are, are more than willing to uh, answer any questions you may have there. And with that, I think I'm done. Thank you, Dave. I put the background picture, uh, you know, of uh, the Eiffel Tower to 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 see that we are overseas, but we are APIs connect uh, us together. What with just one question? Um, uh, I remember when I, I was living in the U.S., uh, Barack Obama in 2013, I think, say that every digi uh, public agency should have an API, and I think the Keen Lane was Presidential Innovation Fellow inside the Department of Veteran of Affairs, right? Uh, so did it help at the time, like the policy and the skills, right? The fact that this internal evangelist, how much it helped to achieve what you are doing today? Yeah, I, I think I think those are two of the very big reasons I'm, I'm talking to you today. So that that whole effort really launched an initiative that has very strong backing within the highest levels of VA to make sure we're making data and services easy to connect to both inside and outside VA. Uh, in ways that are much more modern. So yeah, we have a whole digital transformation and a digital modernization strategy and APIs are, are keys, uh, is a key piece to both of those, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm co-author of a European Commission report about called APIs for governments, uh, why, how, and what, that was just published two months ago. And 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 so this is a Euro European version uh, uh, of, of, of the question, but on your side, maybe the question is like, how much policy is important to support, let's say, internal API champions who wants to open data via APIs, but sometimes, you know, there are some security or whatever agencies who avoid it. Yeah, how much the policy, the text, the, the acts are important? Um, I, I think there's there's both carrots and sticks, right? So the, the policy pieces are, are definitely the sticks and they definitely help. 
but then the carrots work as well too, right? And, and just getting back to that mission, this is for us, uh, this is all about the veteran, right? So this is all about making sure we're all doing as much as we can to make the services and benefits we deliver to veterans and their families as best as they can. And opening up data while still making sure we do that in safe and secure ways is really the, the best way to do that. Um, they really see us as one organization, um, one group of people serving their interest and in opening up those data and services in ways that are easier uh, than they have been in the past is really a key piece of that. Yeah, so really citizens first, like user first, uh, but citizens first and veterans first in that case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Th thank you very much, Dave. Thank you right. for uh, for the, the sharing this. We will have US events uh, uh, next year and we'll be glad to hear the story again more for US uh, 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 residents at least or citizens who, who love APIs. Thank you. Excellent, thanks, Betty. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.